Here's a highly recommended show that I thought was gonna be one thing, and at first, that's exactly what it was, but then it took a massively different turn. Check this out. Everything to do with spy anything just has that exact same sound. Just listen to the notes in that trumpet intro. You know what I mean? Like everything just comes from that initial James Bond theme. We're in a minor key. We're using the, the, the dissonance, in this case, of that tritone. It's a very commonly used one. The, the sixth, the major sixth is a big one. Right? And then the, also the ninth, right? Because we get this. That's a very commonly used chord in spy anything, right? Something like that. Basically what we get a lot of usage out of. Minor pentatonic, and then we're gonna add in the sixth, right? So if we had to fill that out as a scale, what would it be? Probably this, right? So this is, that's E Dorian, right? So if we're talking about our modes, E Dorian, Dorian is the second mode of the major scale. So what is Dorian the second of? It's just the second of D. So if we take the D major scale, just the regular, but start that on E, we get that, that's the scale we get. And this is, but with spy movies and shows like this, we tend to add in those dissonant intervals in different places. So for example, we're hearing a lot of that flat five or that tritone, right? The tritone of E is B flat. So we're getting a lot of, which can also sound a little bit like the blue scale as well. That also works. But we're just gonna get a little bit more of a development. It's not just the blue scale, because we do include, we're probably gonna hear that second, and we're probably gonna hear that major sixth as well. So we're gonna hear all of those notes, and that's kind of what gives us, especially when we have this big band sound, lots of trumpets, like that's what gives us that spy sound. And before we jump into this further, I wanna remind you that our Black Friday sale is currently going on right now. It's the biggest sale we've ever done. We're offering all of our courses, all six of our courses right now. You click the link in the description, you can get them all for 99 bucks. It's like over a $500 value, you can get them for 99 bucks, only for Black Friday through Cyber Monday. So Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Cyber Monday is your last chance to get a hold of this deal and then it goes away forever or at least maybe until next Black Friday. Okay, more about that in a little bit. Let's keep going. Woo! Oh, that was super cool. Oh, that is super cool. Kind of sounds like it's just minor seventh chords. It could be. I know the bass note definitely is this. D flat, C, B, B flat, and the and the top melody note is absolutely E, E flat, D, D flat. So, I mean, that outlines the minor third of each of those chords, and if we filled out the rest of them, does it sound like it matches? Let's listen again. I kind of think so. Now we're back to our E minor home bass. Ah, that was really nice. We went to our four, which is our A minor, our four chord. And then all we're doing, we started in E minor. We have our, we have our E minor home base there, right? And then we go for this little bridge section, we go up to our four chord, and we just do a simple two, five, one, that's it. Hang out on here for a minute. 
And then we have a five chord, a D dominant of some kind, and I'm not 100% sure what we're doing there in terms of upper extensions. But I'm more worried about the overall movement of where this is going because we have this, this big two, five, one in the key of G. Right? And then all we do is just go to our five that brings us back to the E minor. One chord, B7, back to E minor. Okay, this is a really great tool as well. Now, it, it, this can be done in a couple different ways because we can, we can keep the E on the bottom and just call every one of these an E minor chord of some kind. E minor, E minor major seven, E minor seven, E minor six. That's, that's total, that works, that's totally valid. However, we can also do a thing where we bring the bass line down with it. Right, and when we do that, it changes the functionality just a little bit. Now the sound that you and I hear is not really necessarily going to change that much, but if you want to break down what the chords actually are, they do change when we start moving that bass line around. So we start on E minor. Now this you could kind of still look at as like an E minor major seven, uh, but just with the seven in the bass. Now this one, what is this? Is this an E minor seven with the seventh in the bass? Or is it just a G chord with its fifth in the bass? I don't know, it's up to you, right? Move down one more and we get this beautiful C sharp half diminished or C sharp minor seven flat five. Oftentimes we hear this resolve into a C major chord in this particular case. So I don't know if that's what they're gonna do here. Let's listen. Yep. We wind up back on that B7 chord. This is fantastic. It's a really great example of big band writing and it uses some of those classic spy themes. But it kind of doesn't necessarily even stick to that. It kind of goes in its own direction after that and just kind of becomes a really great minor big band chart. This sounds absolutely fantastic. Super fun to listen to. I listened to this and I was like, oh, okay, I get, you know, I kind of get what this is gonna be. And then I listened to the next one and I was like, oh, no, that's not it at all. What? First of all, listen to the bass line and try to make heads or tails of it. And then listen to the piano line and try to make heads or tails of that. And then try to see how on earth are they going together other than just the time, which is this really fast bombastic swing feel. Okay. Now. We talked about a while back, classic anime chord progressions. One of the big things that we talked about in that video was the four, five, six, otherwise can be applied as a flat six, flat seven, one chord progression. We may have mentioned this in that video, but there's another one that pops up a lot in anime. Does anybody know it? It's called the bird blues, okay? And this is actually a form of the 12 bar blues that Charlie Parker was known for innovating, I guess. I'm not sure if he's actually the first person to do it, but we call it the bird blues. When you have a normal 12 bar blues, you have one, two, But with the bird blues, it's totally different, but it winds up bringing itself around into the same place. So we start on the same one, but then we go. Now we wind up on that four in the same place that we would normally wind up on the four in a 12 bar blues, but we just sit there for a moment and then we start changing everything. So we have chromatic two fives leading us back to the place where the two five in the original key would normally be, and that's where we play it. Right? So... Something like that. That's basically what a bird blues is. Now, that first part of it, 
where we have the one chord and then we do a two five to the six. Okay, so let's break down what that means. Here we go. Here's our one, two, three, four, five, six. So our six is D. And if we're gonna do a two five in the key of D minor, that's gonna look like this. E, usually half diminished, some type of seven with whatever alterations you're gonna use. And then that would allow us to land on that D minor chord. So when we say a two five to the six, that's what we're referring to. We're going to the sixth degree in the key of F and we're using it's two five to get us there. So when you hear jazz musicians talk about stuff like, oh, two five to the four, two five to the six, that's basically what we're saying. It's just using the two five of whatever degree of the scale we're going to. So in this case, we're gonna land on our six chord. So we start on our one and we have two, five, and then we wind up on our six. And then in this case, oftentimes what we hear is a chromatic walk down. And then another two five, this time going to the four, which in the key of F is B flat, right? So we have a two five to the six, chromatic walk down, two five to the four. Let's listen and see how close we get. Okay, so yeah, we're in G flat or F sharp. I think that's kind of what we have there. Yeah. There we go. Except we're not using really like a bluesy dominant sound. We're kind of just sticking more to the major chords here. But that's exactly what we have there. So we have, now let's real quick, let's look in, G, in the key of G flat. What is the six? One, two, three, four, five, six. E flat. What is the four? One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. B. So we have E flat and technically it'd be C flat, but whatever, B, it's B. In the key of G flat, we know we're gonna do a two five to the six. That's gonna put us on E flat. And then we walk down, chromatic. And then we have a two five to the four. That's how we get there. It is fascinating to me that this pops up in anime so much. This one chord and then a two five to the six and a two five to the four, and then it usually goes somewhere else. That's literally what we call a bird blues in jazz. It's kind of a cool crossover, I thought. Whoa. What on earth just happened? God, that's hard to hear. Cause there's just so much going on. And there's harmony in the vocals, there's harmony in the brass, harmony everywhere. If you have this going on, is the chord E flat? Is it G flat? Is it A flat? Is it D flat? Like who, it's hard to hear sometimes, right? Let's see if we can get anything out of this section. Cause it's, it sounds really cool. It's gotta either be based on B, like a B minor seventh sound, or it, it could just be an E sus, because it feels like we're, we're, we're ending on A major, right? So, let me listen closer. Whoa! <laughs> Here's what I think is going on there. We have a two five, disguised with a whole bunch of added color tones and maybe some upper extension stuff. And then we end here on A major, that's our two, five, one. But then we kind of go to a four, D. Do we have a, an A flat half? To a two, five, one in, in, in G flat major. That's kind of what I'm hearing, wait, wait, wait. I think that's it. That 
is really cool. So that was the second curveball when I started digging into this, this spy soundtrack that I thought was just gonna be all spy music, but it wasn't. And then I was like, okay, well that's super cool. What about this? And then we get this. What? The groove is just nuts here. Ooh! So I'm not 100% sure what exactly the notes are that are going on in that little interlude section, but it's just so cool. I had to try to figure it out. I think it's something along the lines of like... Something like that. I mean, we clearly have a like a an A major 7 and then a... And then a 2-5 going back to A major with that little interlude chord. There's probably a lot of different ways you could define that. I'm not 100% sure like what the best way would be, but something along those lines, super cool. One of the things that I think is just so cool about something like this is that it's taking something that at the very basis of it is kind of simple. You have this chord, and then it's just A major seven, and then we're setting up a five, one to this chord, and then kind of just going back. And you could really just sit there and loop that the whole time. You could just play those chords and it would sound really great, but they don't just do that. They go to some other interesting places and you can hear how it's like still in the same, in the spirit of the chord progression, keeping it simple and whatnot, but just adding these little details that give your ear something to latch onto and go, oh, I like that, that's different, that sounds great. And it's such just like an eclectic mix of different styles for this soundtrack. You have until the end of Cyber Monday to get a hold of our Black Friday deal. It's the biggest deal we've ever done. All of our courses for 99 bucks. It's over a $500 value. It includes intro to piano, intro to theory, intro to improv, making sense of modes, Harmony 101, and our improv obstacle course. It's everything we currently have in the Academy and it is the biggest deal we've ever done, but we wanted to do something big for Black Friday. So if you've been waiting or considering picking up one of the courses, now's your chance. Use the link in the description, get the entire thing, and it's only available till Cyber Monday ends. So be sure to take advantage of that while you can. And it's the best way that you can support the channel. So we really appreciate it. It helps us do what we love to do, which is continue making this content for you guys. So thank you so much for your support. Be sure to click that link in the description down below or go to cornellmusicacademy.com slash Black Friday. Friday. And that is going to do it. I'm sure there's so much more in the Spy Family soundtrack to go over. And if you guys have specific requests of things that you'd like to see me do in the future with this particular show, uh, definitely leave them down in the comments below because this music is absolutely fantastic. Your recommendations are killer. Keep them coming. Put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.